Welcome back. Everyone knows that iconic theme song from the Jeffersons. The show is part of the legacy of the late TV producer and writer Norman Lear. Lear died Tuesday at 101 years old, and his career spanned six decades. Now, if you don't know his face, you definitely know his work. He laid the blueprint for the future of sitcoms as we know it, which shows like all of the family, Maud, Good Times, and of course, the Jeffersons. At the time, those shows pushed a lot of boundaries on political and social commentary. But there's more to be said about how he handled the black shows and some of the creators. Joining us to talk about it, filmmaker Sean Welling, writer and director Tanya uh, Naylor, and Houston radio legend Rob G. The General. Glad to have you all here on The Factor on Censor. Tanya, let's begin with you. Mm -hmm. One of the beefs that Eric Monty who was crucial, instrumental in good times at many of the shows, uh, black shows that Norman Lear cred was credited for creating. He came up with the idea and he could never get the acknowledgement that he wanted from Lear even after he died. Uh, but Lear, iconic, giving these black actors and black writers the chance to start these shows. But when you have an individual like Eric Monte, who also did Cooley High, mm -hmm. um, uh, the Jeff uh, Good Times as well, Sanford and Son, crucial, but he never got the credit or the money for creating those or coming up with the idea. Your thoughts on that? There is always a sore spot with that situation. And when you look at media studies, we, we study that as, as students of media. But at the same time, we have to say that art imitates life. The struggle, out of the struggle comes progress. Mm -hmm. So without that, that push and pull, I know that we wouldn't have shows today. We wouldn't have John Amos walking away and precursor to Dave Chappelle walking away from money mm -hmm. to make a point. So I know it was a, a, a horrible situation. We wish he could have gotten more credit. But at the same time, this, the lessons that we've learned from that have allowed us to have the, the great creativity that we have today. So I'm grateful for it. I, I feel like it just wasn't his time to mm -hmm. do it. You know, it moves slowly. Right. And then someone had to come along to push the dial. So um, we have to take the good with the bad in that situation. And taking the good with the bad, Sean, is having quality, incredible, laugh your ass off shows like All in the Family, Maude, The Jeffersons, Good Times, Sanford and Son. Your thoughts about Norman Lear's legacy? Well, you know, the one thing that I was so excited about, and I'm going to talk about my experience because I was there growing up with it. This was living room comedy. So what it did for me and my family, we were... Whole we were, families. We were, well, we were in our living yeah. room watching this. We weren't, you know, at Starbucks or on our phone somewhere. So we were transported into the Jefferson's living room. We were transported into not just a stereotype of a black family, because each family was vastly different. Mm -hmm. One was an successful businessman. Another one had a junkyard, and he was dealing with age. And the other one had, you know, a family. And we saw the first real strong family man who wasn't flawed, mm -hmm. and that was James. Mm -hmm. um, and what I think the other ones had that was so great were these were flawed men, and the women were really keeping them in check, um, and that was a great homage to females. Mm -hmm. But my family was in those families' homes, and that was the, the wonderful thing about it. And Rob G, those are the dynamics we're talking about that Norman Lear is responsible for creating. Even when they initially wanted to make good times, uh, a single mother household and um, uh, as the role decided yeah that she said I'm not doing it without a husband right and that was the first father black father on TV in a full family structure and she said this is the only way I'm gonna do it and Norman Lear said let's do it yeah you know uh, Norman Lear leaves behind a very complicated legacy you know uh, you brought up Eric Monte and, and and the ideas that were taken from him he actually had a lawsuit uh, that he won a million dollars but consequently he was blackballed in Hollywood mm -hmm. even after winning the lawsuit um, and and then a lot of the shows that he uh, he quote unquote created were BBC shows. Steptoe and Son was the precursor to Sanford and Son. Mm -hmm. And uh, Eric Monty was the one that decided, hey, let's make it a the the, the junkyard guy a black guy. Mm -hmm. And so uh, he leaves a, co a, a complicated legacy, but the, at the same time, he introduced a lot of uh, conversations that we never had before, dealing with divorce, dealing with uh, homosexuality, during, dealing with racism, and these were things that were not presented on TV uh, during the Leave it to Beaver age. So, uh, you know, kudos for that.
And many of these shows are still on television today, and they've had a resurgence or revival on Jimmy Kimmel, mm -hmm. where he worked with Norman Lear to bring uh, versions, newer versions of Good Times for one time, uh, the Jeffersons as well. So they're enduring, and right. they, they stand the test of time. Correct. We see generations of, of Americans being able to enjoy storylines. My grandfather didn't necessarily see himself as a Jefferson, but he saw his children as that. Mm -hmm. And I watch the reruns all the time. I actually sit down with my kids now and talk to them about the storyline of how we could actually fit and how the Jeffersons to us, and we were studying media in college, were the precursors to the Cosby Show because mm -hmm. a lot of people couldn't see well, a, a black man with a stay-at-home wife. What? Black women worked, mm -hmm. so to be able to dream and, and to we see still, it. when the Cosby's came, Cosby's came, they said ourselves. a doctor and a lawyer, black? right? No right. Way. But we were uh, able to dream, and so my parents became the modern day Bill Cosby. I mean, I had a pilot for a father and a mother who was a police officer, mm -hmm. so it was like we were unicorns to a lot of people. But that was reality for me. So to be able to be able to see that, and my kids be able to build off of that is so important. Sean, will we see TV like this ever again? Not at this point, not right now. It won't be accepted, unfortunately, and it should be because this really does bring it home for us. Um, I, I think it's very special the way they handled everything. They were allowed to talk about these issues without anybody getting offended and really accepting the idea right. that we can communicate and we can communicate with all cultures. Keep in mind, this, I like to not think of this as a black or white thing because all cultures, like you mentioned, were involved in this and talked about. So it really was an all-cultural thing. Uh, I do want to add one thing. When I, I know he's not as involved in um, what's happening, but when I first saw um, the pop lock on what's happening, uh, that really? got me really, yeah, everyone, yeah. that got me interested in urban dance mm -hmm. and, and s eventually opened up a dance studio. So Incredible. it was a big motivational for me. Thank you guys for joining us.